Hey nerds, welcome to Jerry Bear Reacts. Today, we're going to react to Season 10, Episode 9 of Supernatural, entitled, almost said Stranger Things, entitled, The Things We Left Behind. That's why I read things. The Things We Left Behind. Last episode, we get the, the reintroduction of Donna. Uh, we get Jody back again and their friendship, relationship, friendship, relation, friends, whatever. Whatever they got going on with Dean saying, it's the first time since I've been back that this mark hasn't had a direct effect on me. Uh, the big thing I hope that happens in this episode is we get the cliffhanger from episode seven touched on again, which was the fact that uh, Veronica Mars, Verona, w w Rwanda, whoever, Venereal, is Crowley's mother. Last episode had shit all to do with that, but I'm hoping we come back to it. Like I said at the end of that last episode, if I had to wait a week after seven to watch episode eight and had nothing to do with Crowley's mom, I'd just be like, bro, come the fuck on. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to hop into this. Uh, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe for daily content. If there's a day, there is a reaction. Links will be in the description box down below for the Patreon, the Twitch stream, and everything in between. And Jerry will do his best work behind the scenes. And uh, we're going to hop into episode nine right here, friends. Hit him with a boop. And let's watch. Bloody Dean. Kill him all, dead body in the hallway. You was just a demon. What was it this time? Shoplifting. The guy ain't looking to press charges, but I figured you'd want her back. That's 48 hours in isolation. Oh, scary. <sighs> what do I, what do I know her from? Like immediately. Is this Jimmy Novak's daughter? Bro, okay, it's like real talk. I'm gonna fucking scream because I, Novak, you got a visitor. It's not from this show either. Really? Your father's here to see you. It's gonna drive me bonkers. I, I can't wait to the end of the episode. I'm so sorry. I've never been more distraught looking at somebody like, okay, I've seen you in something before. That's the girl that got recast for Quantum Mania. Yeah, Cassie Lang. Okay, okay. We got a couple things here. Yes, she was Cassie Lang in Quantum Mania. She was Lucy. In Detective Pikachu. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. But definitely Detective Pikachu and definitely Quantumania. She looks completely different, but her face, you can you can see it. All right. Anyways, Jesus, that was going to stress me out. Daddy. I am not your father. <laughs> I... Hello, Claire. I was going to do a Vader thing, but you saw it went nowhere with it. It's been a long time. Supernet. And I think it's going to be a long, long time. The touchdown brings me back again to find. You're not Scott Lang. That means well, then how are you? I was reassembled. But just this. Your father is in heaven. Well, yay for him. Uh, that's a lot to throw on somebody and I get her anger and aggression, but I I don't know. I feel like in that moment and I'm like, hey, is my dad still in there? And they're just no, like there would be emotion to overcome me. And like you're explaining all this stuff. I'm like, I really don't give a fuck. That's cool, you're ripped apart, brought back. How how are you still in this form then? Huh? But I would have tears. Tears of joy. It's not tears of joy. Anyway, good talk. You can Wait, oh, my way. Oh, oh. Claire. What? There. Castiel's little tie. It was always, he didn't like the tie. He didn't fuck with the tie, bro. Now you look like a dad. Is that one of Sam and Dean's ties? No, no. He's so fucking awkward, and I love it. So, Mr. Novak, I understand you want custody of your daughter. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's, uh, that's the plan. <clears throat> that's right. I think I might have bed bugs. Any tips? Of course. You should sleep tight and not let them bite. I'll try that. It's the fucking fact of the matter that that's the first thing my brain went to as well. 
And this man said that shit with pure confidence. It doesn't matter. He's my dad. I've... Save it. I'm denying your application for custody. <laughs> I'm not trying to be the bad guy here. I'm not. But until Claire turns 18, she is my responsibility. I know you're trying to do what you think is best. I know you want to be your friend. I do. And that's our problem, Mr. Novak. You should be her father. Yeah. The last few years have not been easy for her. And she doesn't need a friend. She needs a father. Boom. <laughs> hut -day, hut. <laughs> oh, yeah. He does have a thing for three stooges. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> See? <laughs> that right there. That right there is so good because you have Sam take at least one second. One second to look at the mark. But then he realizes he's having a moment with his brother watching the Three Stooges. Now they can both sit there and laugh. And what's more beautiful than that? Nothing. Oh, Cass coming in and do a little B and E, breaking in on a little child. Is he sleeping? Sleeping tight so the bed bugs don't bite. Oh, oh. Okay, this is what I was gonna say when I first saw Cass, but now we're coming right back to this. This, the things we left behind. This feels like the episode that should have followed up episode seven. Episode eight could have been elsewhere. This feels weird. Like episode eight feels so out of place now that this is right here. This should have took. Yep. All right. I'm cool with it. Damn. Get your hands off her like it. Oh, they got brother a suit. Got him out of the goddamn. Uh, goddamn. Sit. It's been bloody weeks since I last saw me son. I'm sorry. Tell me. I'm sorry, me boy. Y'all gonna exchange names? Oh. Aim accounts? Yeah. French fry. It's just like you could eat a vegetable. Damn. Ketchup's a vegetable. Potato is a vegetable. You've changed. You want to get some stuff for the road? Huh? I have to pee. She's about to ditch your ass, bro. She gotta go pee. You pay the bill. You got a Mark's Feet store? What the fuck is this? Oh, sorry. Oh. My bad. Nah, she just jacked your wallet or something, big guy. Come on, dude. She's a little shit, bro. What do you do in that situation, though? Like, for real? I mean, he's probably going to end up watching, washing some dishes, but, like... It's not about the wallet. But, like, in that actual real-life situation, like, if somebody stole your wallet, like, how do you... This what happens what you this? this is your emergency? Yes. No. Guess. An emergency is a dead body, okay? Or, or a wigged-out angel. Or the apocalypse. Take three. Just been thinking about people. Helps because he doesn't eat, so he's just gonna be a fat ass and have a second burger. <laughs> I ain't mad at him. Some. Hey, they're serving y'all water and wine glasses. Hell yeah, I've, I've heard some. You're having a midlife crisis. Well, I'm extremely old, I think I'm entitled. I agree. I was a horrible mother, she was a horrible mother. Right on cue. Did I tell you time, She almost traded me for three pigs. Hey. Three. Oh, that's one bacon. Child, I could juggle. You got four five pigs. pigs. <laughs> I was going to say four My pigs. My mom used to burn me with cigarettes. Oh, and now it's a competition. Nobody cares, Gerald. Wow. They're going to be started about the name. Gerald, I care, bud. Fergus. Sounds like a venereal disease, not the fun kind. There's no fun. There's no fun. And what? Stop it. Look, boss. I like to spoil my kids. 
Maybe he'll give us some more time. He's a loan shark. They're not so big on second chances. Kind of thought you were going to steal enough to pay down the debt like we talked about, but... Well... I tried. Not hard enough. Just get his card and go make a deposit. Or did he not have a credit card? That guy looks familiar as well. Not him. Come Wiener on. Hut. Wiener Hut, Dustin. One last family meal. This. Oh, Cass, hold up. I'm lifting you 10 feet. No. In the air, I don't care who was I there and who up. saw me. Is the hot dog good? Wiener Hut. Oh, yeah, phenomenal. Quick in, quick out. Watch out for the cameras. They got her robbing a whole convenience store, dude. Y'all are bad influences. I, listen, you have to make money the way you have to make money in life. I get it. I would never fucking work at a gas station or a convenience store. There's like a 75 chance, 75% chance you're gonna get robbed on a daily basis. Somebody's gonna want that money. It don't matter who. It don't matter what area you live in. That shit. Sketchy. When you hit that registered jockey hard. Registered jockey. You understand? Good. You know how upset I'd be if you called me a fucking registered jockey? Come back to me. That shit sound like a slur. Give me all your fucking money. Daddy says no. How do you know about that? Dustin. Claire. That man is using you. He was there for me. When things got bad and they got real damn bad, he was there when no one else was. He's my family. And you're just... You're just a dude, dude. You can go to hell. He's already been there before. Bye, Claire. Later, Tater. Daddy, we'll Boss see you now. I was gonna go with boss, but I feel like daddy would have been funnier. Please. You said you'd be back in a flash, and then you disappeared. I was eight years old. Eight! Oh, now you're being dramatic. I didn't even have a father. Of course you had a father. You were just conceived during a winter solstice orgy. What the it's fuck? Not like I was taking names. Jesus, the old pump and dump. What do you want me to say? I had a disagreement with the locals and you have a second chance we could be a wee family again Fergus a real family Fergus Crowley Crowley and I have a family <laughs> the demons no Sam Winchester Any one of or them would Dean Winchester in the back if they thought they could get away with it not Sammy and you would some of that shit it doesn't feel genuine Nah. Give me a shot of. Uh, you know what that fucking reminds me of? Three whiskeys. Three whiskeys, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. This. Remember that fuck ass scene with Eddie Brock at the end of the movie? And he's like, and then blah, 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 and then blah, 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 blah. So this guy, blah, 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 blah. And then. Oh, but there's still some goo left behind. I'm so fucking mad. All that makes me mad. Great movie. Right, that post credit scene made me irate. Waste of a character. I guess we were working this haunting in Long Island, and, and me and Sam begged the old man let us go to the city for once. He had this thing about New York, right? Too big, too loud, too dirty. Yeah, and he hated the Yankees. All of these things are actual, factual. And I love New York. 
but they're not wrong. Big time. Yeah. Somehow. Not the Yankees, but I love the city of New York. I just Manhattan is fucking awesome. And we convince them to let it be like I'm gonna puke forever. And right about that. Time, <laughs> I hear him. Same. Dean Winchester. My old man. I don't know how, but he found me. And now I'm really freaking out, because he's just standing there, not saying anything. I look around, everybody else is freaking out, too. In fact, nobody's even looking him in the eye. And finally, this one guy with, like, a safety pin through his nose and a, a kill-everything tattoo looks up, and he says, Sorry, sir. No. Sorry, sir. Oof. Me whining about how much he embarrassed me. Well, that's because you're a kid. Me telling him that I hated him. It's because you're a kid. But then he stopped and turned around and he looked at me and he said, Son, you don't like me. That's fine. It's not my job to be liked. It's my job it's to, to raise, raise you right. right. I knew that that was fucking coming because that's a saying as old as time right there, man. And he did. Yeah, it's not my job. Parents say that all the time. It's not my job for you to like me. I'm here to raise you. Now, that's some stone-cold, like, hard-nosed loving, right? I'm more of a... I, I think I would be more like a gentle parent. Like, I'm going to... I, I imagine I'd be friends with, with my child. You know? Like, I'd be best friends. Like, I'd want you to look at me and respect me as a parent. But, like, I'm going to give you reasons. Like, you know, I'm going to earn that respect. And that may be a wild thing for a, an older person to hear that a parent would have to earn the respect from their child. But once they get to a certain age and your brain's on its own and you, you're free with all these, these thoughts and opinions and things, like, there's a million different reasons not to respect somebody. But, like, you know, I don't know. I think I can go more in depth on that, but I, I'll kind of leave it there just for the sake of the runtime and, and sake of the show and stuff. But it's, uh, yeah. Like you said, John Winchester's not going to win Dad of the Year. We've talked about it before on multiple times in these videos. John Winchester's not going to win Dad of the Year. He's not going to win Father of the Year. But God, there's two sides of that coin, man. I say it all the time. There's two sides. What do we got here? What is this? Is it an American dollar? Got an American dollar. Boom, boom. There's two sides of this coin. There's heads and tails. Two sides of John Winchester. There's, yeah, all right, this dude's a shitty parent. Bing, bam, boop, the other. He treated his kids like shit. He put them in all these bad situations. But then there's the side of, like, God, if he wouldn't have done anything for those boys when the moment was there. You know, like, he he instilled some good things in them that, that can't go unmentioned. Could it have been better? Could he have been better? Of course. But for what they got, it is what it is. And can I also just say, I just love that whole speech monologue story from dean that was good shit more, i need more of that from either him or sam randy randy <laughs> hey hey nothing you can say Evening, little lady nothing's Honey? gonna change what you've done to me you have something for me i hear voices in my head they counsel me they understand they talk to me no! You tried that shit too quick. Guns blazing, huh? That was your plan? You walked in here two chains with a fucking beer, no, brother? This pile of crap. Deal for you. Cut the prop papa act. I'll make you a good deal. I don't want to knock buddy. Not him. The other guy. Hold on. Like I said. Claire's family. I don't want to knock bro right here, but he's not very convincing in this role for me. It's, uh, uh, this guy, yeah. Deal. I don't know. Better be a damn good deal. You a sellout, bro. Sellout. But I get it. He don't want to die. I'll kill you, bitch. That's enough, Gerald. Jerry, it's enough. <laughs> Right to the back of your shit, Jerry! Rest in enough, peace. Gerald. Yeah. Rest in peace, Gerald, bro. Thank you. Shut up. 
I don't like a grown man walking into a room with a little ass kid drinking a beer, shutting the door behind him. I don't like. Here comes. It's Claire, right? I don't like it. You really are a pretty one, you know that? There you go! Kick him in the dick! Force push! Do it. it up. What's up, biz niche? Oh, front kick. You got him. Keep kicking him in the balls over and over. Nah, let her. Yeah. There you go. There you go. It's okay. You're okay. Yeah, cut his fucking Jimmy off. See what I did there, Jimmy Novak? <laughs> Randy. Son of a bitch. Get her out of here. Yeah. Go. When the red, when it filters through. Wish you wouldn't you have done that. Don't want to do this. <laughs> Sammy's picking up on it. I wasn't even thinking about the fucking... Oh, damn. That was the nightmare that he had. I wasn't even thinking about that room or none of that shit. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about the bodies or none of it, dude. Dane. Tell me it was them or you. Oh, dude. Boop, 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 boop. That shit right there is what makes this show so goddamn good. It's that stuff those moments at the end of the episodes hey was it them or you tell me you didn't have a choice he said i didn't mean to tell me you had to i didn't but at the same time he kind of did because he broke a bottle over his head so it kind of came a little threatening but he didn't have to do it the way that he did it and i hate that claire had to see it as well guilt drives castiel to track down his vessel's daughter and break her out of a group home Elsewhere, Rowena tries to reach out to Crowley. So it wasn't necessarily a nightmare. It just feels like something that's happened before. Maybe it was a nightmare sequence. Maybe he saw something in the future of him just like kind of snapping. But regardless, like in that moment, push come to shove, he snapped. And I think there is hunger calling to him from that mark. I just think that that's just the way it's going to be. Until he can get rid of it or get back to Kane, or I feel like getting it back to Kane is the only way to kind of resolve this. Otherwise, it involves something bad happening to Dean. Uh, I don't think he can just like burn that thing off either. I don't. I don't think that's an option. Like I just, you know, just roast it off, just sizzle it away. Uh, I don't. I don't think he has that. Can't just cut it off. Did, did Sam ever get his tattoo back? Anyways, um, we get reintroduced to Claire Novak, Jimmy Novak's daughter, Castiel's corpse host. And uh, yeah, she's just, she's running and stealing for this dude. Cash shuts it down, gets reacquainted, saves her. But the big thing to take away is just that moment there at the end. Dean tells Cass too, if I go dark side, you got to smite me. You got to put me down. And I think that's kind of look on Cass's face. It's like, do I really have to do this? And Sam, just pure concern, like, hey, tell me what just happened. Like, if it's them or you, you had to do what you had to do. But if otherwise, Dean, Jesus, fuck, what, what's going on? What are you doing, Ed the boy, you know? 
that's another really good episode. I appreciate the string of episodes here. And we get bits and pieces of Crowley and his mom and his mom lying, manipulating the girl next to her, manipulating Gerald, manipulating Crowley into saying that Gerald's bringing up souls from heaven just to be put down. Uh, she ain't coming back for that girl. So she's manipulating her way back into Crowley's life. For what purpose? To take over at this King of Hell location? To take over this spot? For Fergus, you know? I don't know, but this episode feels like it should have been picked up where episode 7 left off. Episode 8 could have been moved to somewhere later down the season, but it does explain the time gap of, Ro of uh, Rwanda, <laughs> Rowena saying that it has been weeks and she's been locked up initially. So there's a lot of good to take away from this. A lot of good. And Dean put them all down. Even, even fucking Randy. And Randy... Was about to pimp out his own little girl. And for what? What was the deal that was made? It's fucking gross, dude. Anyways, I appreciate the string of solid episodes right here in season 10. Because there was a couple where I was just like, mm, what are we doing? Or actually, it was just one. Ash Jeeves was a little weird. Paper Moon, Soul Survivor. Those weren't, you know, phenomenal. But fan fiction and uh, Rickenbach was amazing. And then we have, you know, Girls, 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 Hibbing, and this. These are these are three fun games. I, I, I like. I appreciate Season 10, Episode 9, entitled The Things We Left Behind. Season 10, Episode 10, the 10 for 10, is entitled The Hunter Games. And I'll see you there. Links and everything will be in the description box down below. Playlist will be up on screen. As always, stay cute, stay hydrated, and I'll catch you on the next one.